Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we're guitar hunting at Meekum Auctions. Most people know about buying guitars on Reverb.com. eBay can also be a good venue, and sometimes even your local Craigslist. But not as many small time buyers ever think about looking at a public auction. So that's what we're gonna do today. This is called Meekum Auctions. They're known for doing collector cars, motorcycles, tractors, road art, but there's also a little subcategory right here called guitar search. And I just recently became familiar with this at their last auction about four months ago, where I saw some guitars sell for crazy prices. Just for reference, today's Tuesday, January 7th. So we've actually already missed one of the auctions because they had one on January 6th, the 9th, the 10th, as well as the 11th. So let's see what I missed yesterday. The one person that I do know that is in this collection is Chicago Music Exchange's CEO. So that's why you're going to see things like this one, that pink SG. This is a guitar that's an exclusive run just for them. I honestly kind of like this pink one, but it looks like, oh, maybe it does have some damage right there. So maybe they just put these in here for extra advertising. That's my best guess because it seems to be that there was one of each color. See, here's another one of their yellow ones. Here's a green one. I think if I was going to review one of these, it would have to be the green one. And this one doesn't look like it's all beat up like that other one. But other than that, it looks like we had a vintage Epiphone. I don't know too much about those, but that looks pretty cool. One of these days I'll have to start. Oh, wow. That's a nice flamed back there. It looks like the sides are also flamed. You get a cool little headstock. Yeah, one day for sure I'll have to get into some older Epiphones, but I'm not necessarily a big acoustic guy. So this one doesn't quite speak to me as much. Here's a crazy looking Dean Razor back, but this Trini Lopez, you can bet your butt one day I'll buy one of these things. I don't do too many hollow guitars, but these things are cool. It looks like we got a little bit of wear on the back, but I love the goofy like bird eagle headstock here. And then you also have the special inlays on these guys and the whole double cutaway body design with the Trini Lopez diamond F holes. It's just cool. I'm not really familiar with the market on those. Here's something I am familiar with, the designer series. I've had a few of these, but I tend to not buy the ones that have Kalers because they are tough to sell. There's a reason why this one went to auction. Here's a cool silver tone. I don't know too much about this brand, except for Jimmy Page kind of gave him notoriety, but it looks like it didn't sell. Wow, that's some extreme wear on that thing. This is like an original silver burst finish from the late 50s. I guess I never even thought that maybe Gibson took that idea from someone else. Yeah, I could see why somebody might not want to buy that one with all that wear on the back there. I had one of these that was such a beat up player. You'll flip out when I tell you that I bought it for 1200 bucks. And it actually looked kind of similar to this guitar. I don't think it's the same because mine had this crazy headstock repair on it. But even though that was one of the first guitars that I bought when I restarted my business of guitars, I'll forever remember that Craigslist trip, checking that thing out. Really sketchy situation out in the middle of nowhere, but it definitely panned out for me. But these guitars, they are amazing, and they've got the whole Scotty Moore vibe, definitely unlike anything else I've ever played. Move on to page number two here. Looks like a Robin Alvin P90. What exactly is going on here? I'm guessing this is like some boutique high-end, like super sculpted out Les Paul Jr. copy. Yeah, I don't know much about that brand. Though, I can't say I like it. Ooh, that's an interesting jazz master. So it's kind of like a jazz master meets Stratocaster. This, this is late 90s. That neck looks very similar to my copper caster. I had somebody telling me that like all the necks looked like that. And now I'm kind of seeing it. I don't know if I like this neck so much on this particular Jazz Master. And the three single coil setup? I don't know how to feel about that. Oh, cool, a prototype. A Shell Pink ES 335? 355, I'm sorry. I got confused because I didn't see a Veritone there. I'm wondering if this was like a limited production run that they were planning to do, and this was like the prototype for it, but then they decided not to. Huh. This thing's kind of interesting. <laughs> so we've got like a neck P90 and a middle P90 directly on top of each other. That's interesting. That's probably a modification if I had to guess, but it looks like it didn't sell. So maybe you can buy it from CME yet. 
The Harmony's kind of cool. And ooh, Bowling Ball Strat. I actually did a, a Wyvern episode about these guys. And in my previous browsing of this thing, there were actually three of these for sale because CME actually bought like a complete collection. They were trying to sell them together. Odds are they probably thought the auction was the best way to get a nice price for the full set, or they were just sitting for a while because I remember seeing these on CME's uh, Instagram page. Let's see if we can find them real quick. Well, here's their SGs that they're always advertising. There's a guy being risky with a Jazz Master. There's the master built watermelon 12 string. There it is. I knew I saw this together. So that was posted when? Six weeks ago. So there's that complete collection for you. Some of those things look better than others, but you can definitely check out this Wyvern to see more examples of those and learn about its history. So that's gonna do it for the first day. Now let's react to what these things sold for because last time, as I was telling you earlier, these things sold for crazy prices that I couldn't believe. It was like, huh, maybe I should put my Steve Howe TLP in one of these because that's probably where I would find a buyer for it. I'm not too worried about it though. I like owning that guitar. So here we go. The Fender Player Stratocaster sold for $600. I'm not quite familiar with the prices on those, but the Gibson USA SG Standard Electric. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad I missed this. $500? There's no way that can be right. That's what they get for not putting a reserve on it. It must have just been that finish blemish, but. Even for 500 bucks, I wouldn't have cared. I would have probably at least paid $850 for this thing. But that just goes to show you how much a small little ding on the front that chips the finish is gonna just cut your throat when it comes to resale time. Just for reference, those things are $1,499 new. They were trying to sell me one for $1,350. And sometimes you can find some used ones like around $1,100. But for $500, man, I'm upset with myself for not watching that one. What did the other ones go for? Ah, dang, 800. But you gotta remember, there is a buyer's premium on top of this. And it looks like for this auction, it's 20%. Which might not sound like a lot, but if you win the auction at $800, you're gonna have another $160 fee on top of that. So that's 960 bucks. So that one didn't go for a steal, but I probably even would have bought it for that price. I would like to get one of those around $900 for a review and demo, because I figure somebody will pay me about $1,150 for it so I can break out even. But holy Toledo, <laughs> they did pretty good on this SG standard. I guess this is a good way for Chicago Music Exchange to gauge which colors are most popular to like somebody just bidding on stuff. $1,100. So they paid about $1,300 for this one. Somebody really wanted that one. Same thing with this other green one. They did pretty good on those. They didn't do too bad on that designer explorer either. Once again, the final buyer paid about 13, which is a pretty fair price for that guitar with the Kaler. Lots of finish checking on that one. Ooh, man, maybe those things aren't as expensive as I thought. Only $2,250 for the Trini Lopez. I thought these were like $4,000 guitars. Yeah, that seems to be about right. So what was wrong with this one? Besides being a little bit beat up, I see a little spot on the neck. It looks like a non-original case. Looks like a few repaired cracks that are minor. So to the final buyer, it was 2,700 bucks. I think that was a pretty good deal. We'll just quickly browse over the rest of these here, see if there's anything that really stands out to me. Definitely let me know in the comments if there's something that's like crazily cheap. Like here's that Jazz Master we were looking at. Hmm. For a custom shop fender, that seems really cheap, even with the buyer's premium. That kind of stinks. I probably would have bought this one. Dang, it looks like they initially had that listed at $3,500. That's a real slap in the face to only get 15. It's stuff like this that really scares me from ever putting anything in an auction. <laughs> Man, e even the 335, people do not like pink Gibsons, do they? I mean, there's a certain quirky charm to them, especially if it's a prototype. Only 1100. I probably would have paid a solid 15 for this because I could probably still have sold it for about 19 to 2000. That seems really cheap. But it looks like that Fender Bowling Ball Strat, I don't think they did too bad on that one. It looks like they were originally going for five and a half thousand. But when you're dealing on collectible instruments like these, that's normally within haggle range. So the fact somebody actually paid 4,800 for that, I think they did okay. 
Especially seeing as the only thing special about these guitars is pretty much the finish. They're from that weird era when they only have two knobs and the output jack is on the front. Let's go ahead and check out what's happening tomorrow, Thursday, January 9th. Ooh, Gibson Crest 335. Ooh. So the thing with these guys is they are Brazilian rosewood, and they're one of the few guitars that actually used Brazilian rosewood in the 70s. The other one being the Brazilian rosewood top Les Paul Custom. These things always get listed for really crazy prices, but rarely ever sell for that much. But you can find them listed all the way up to like 10, 12 grand, and sometimes they sell for that. I mean, this is a really, really nice example, so I bet it will sell for a premium. But it looks like this is the Brian Goff collection, so that probably means Brian Goff's Bizarre Guitars, if I were to guess. He's actually the guy I bought my first The Les Paul from. That was quite an exciting trip all the way up to Wisconsin. Man, but the current bid's already at 4250 I really see that one hitting like probably 8000 We're talking top dollar for that one. Moving on here, we have the Bolin Joker guitars. Those were actually featured on Pawn Stars pretty recently. I also did a Wyron episode about them a long time ago. Oh, but this is the one I'm really excited for. So this is an artist prototype that was never made in production. According to this listing anyways. So you know the Artist series, right? With the built-in Moog electronics? Apparently they were going to do that with an Explorer body shape. And you know, if this is truly a prototype, that makes this a very significant guitar. And the only thing that kind of throws me off is why is the neck pickup upside down on this guy? I could see this being worth quite a bit of money, and it's already bid up to 2750 I'm probably going to have to tap out at that point but that's gonna make a nice collector's guitar for someone. Looks like we got a couple more of the CME guitars right here. I'm surprised this one's been bid up to 700 already. This one I bet we'll see that same 1100. And here's the other two bowling ball guitars. If I had to pick one, I would probably go with this blue one. Looks like we've got a Lucite bass right there. A pretty cool looking Rickenbacker there. Pointy Dave Mustaine guitar. <laughs> oh, why not? Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. That is one pointy explorer so you got the the pointy bits on each end instead of rounded off like normal you got dave mustaine's shadow on the back pointy headstock all the good works here so yeah not much going on tomorrow i'm not big enough in these bowling ball strats that i would pay quite that much the coolest thing has to be this explorer i would love to document that but i hate the artist series models they just don't sound good there's a few really good tones out of them but everything else is kind of yeah not so good <laughs> but that's definitely one i never heard of before this one so congratulations brian goff for sourcing that one moving on here to friday oh Two guitars on Friday, but man, are these big guys. So this is a 1960 Gibson Les Paul Standard Scarface, as well as a 1959 Les Paul Standard. These are the two listings that made me go, oh, that's CME in this auction, because I didn't put two and two together of the CEO's name or see any of their posts on their Instagram page. But this Scarface one, they did a video about all the bursts that they have. What I find kind of... Uh, sneaky about this listing is they don't show you the Scarface mod within the pictures. And I think that is a very vital thing that they should have. And what Scarface is, is basically somebody did the Jimmy Page mod to this guitar. So underneath the pick guard, there's a small area that's routed out to fit a toggle switch or something like that. I forget. So because of that, most collectors are like, no, we don't want that. Despite having a beautiful top. I'm not quite sure how long they've owned this particular burst, but it doesn't surprise me that they're auctioning off their high-end guitars. So our current bid is $51,000 and the estimate is $180 to $225. That sounds about right for something that has a beautiful top like that, but also has a very defacing modification. Looks like other things wrong where the headstock wing was re-glued at some point. Not a big deal. So this is just a super player grade burst. Well, if we're paying 20%, so if you put an $80,000 bid in, that would also be $16,000. So you'd have to pay $96,000. Well, I think it's about time we get a burst on the channel, don't you? Woohoo! We got it! Ah, oh, just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> this will be outbid so fast. But if not, yeah, I could probably get that much money if I really needed to. Guess I probably should have checked out the other one here. So this one is a 59 with less of a flame top and is estimated to sell for a lot more and was featured in the Burst Believers book. And it has not been previously circulated for decades. See, this is the type of burst I would want to own, but I definitely cannot afford. It doesn't have a super big top, but it's just kind of a nice little beautiful guitar. Honestly, I prefer the color of that one without all the flame. That one's a little bit too tangerine-y for my tastes. So if you need a really nice burst in your life, I would go for that one. Let me have the Scarface for cheap. <laughs> And then it looks like we have two blocks within Saturday here. So the first one is a 1960 Getty Lee ES355. That's pretty pricey. And then you get a natural from 1960. I don't know too much about the ES market. That's the reason why we don't see too many of these guitars. But this natural one's nice and beautiful. Looks like it has a little bit of bird's eye going on here with some light wear. That's definitely not my favorite combination of things from this era. And what's in our last block here? All right, so we've got a 62 Melody Maker. The double cut Melody Maker's not my favorite, but they're still pretty good guitars. Looks like we have a Howard Lees PRS from 2009. Fender Mustang from the Ben Chasen collection. Isn't that quite a name? I've been chasing you, Ben. Oh, I'm sure that guy's got that pun too many times in his life. Firebird 1, so that means it's probably been modified. Wow, that Karina V's already got quite a bit on it, $4,000. He's definitely gonna do okay on that. Looks like a 56 gold top that's performing pretty well. These are all the guitars people want. Wow, 57 Les Paul Custom. That's a pretty nice R9 too. And I could tell who's auctioning these guys off just by the background. That has to be Gary's classic guitars. There's one other person that kind of mimics his guitar photography, so it could be that person too. Does it have a name associated with it? I'm not seeing it, but I would assume that's who that is. Here's a pretty nice Explorer in Mahogany. So the Explorer first came back in 1976 as Mahogany. So the first year is super desirable if it says limited edition on the back. If it doesn't say limited edition, your guitar is worth half because people want that very first run when they brought them back. And a lot of people do not understand that on the used market. So this one is just a regular Explorer and not worth a whole lot of money. But by not worth a whole lot of money, we're still talking about three grand. And it looks like that one has some pretty significant wear right there. So it'll be interesting to see what this one ends up selling for. I bet they'll do okay on it though. Jeez, how does that happen on a 1999 R9? Somebody had to have played this or it was a relic job. But that one's got a pretty nice top to it. Now that's a 335 that speaks to me. But being a 61, I think that means it would have PAFs in it yet. But that cherry has aged perfection. There's too much wear on the neck for my taste, so I wouldn't buy this one strictly because of that reason. And that's probably why it's being auctioned off because nobody was going to buy it. But that's a nice player's grade 335. <laughs> Rick Nielsen, man, you've got some cool stuff. I would love to tour through his entire collection and give you guys like a rig rundown style of his whole thing because he's got some really cool guitars in there. So Rick, if you're out there, well, let's meet up. We'll do something. But this is his Maverick. I love these oddball fenders that weren't meant to exist, but do exist. That's where you get the whoop a doo woos Looks like he's auctioning off a Modern. I am forever grateful to the guy who brought me three original Moderns from the 80s to review and document. Sure, that was in the era when it's not quite up to the same standards of today, but where else are you gonna find all three color variations, well, besides the few very rare ones that are only rumored to exist or there are only a few made, all in one video. <laughs> a vintage Fender Mandocaster. There we go, Rick. Once again, bringing out the cool stuff. I forgot this one was in here. 1968 Fender Rosewood Telecaster prototype. Apparently owned by Elvis Presley. I would love this guitar. I have always wanted a pure rosewood telecaster i'm not sure if i'll ever buy one of the rare 60s ones but i've came very close to the 80s reissues i i have i'm just lost for words on this one it is beautiful and i can't even imagine what this thing will sell for so the beatles original one sold for 400 000. 
I don't think Elvis was as well known for having this one, but it's still a famous, famous guy that owned it. If I had to take a guess, maybe 200,000, 250? We'll have to see what that one goes for. Oh, and poor Rick. Nobody's bidding on this Modern. Let's see what's wrong with it. Original electronics, so that means Tim Shaw's. Solder joints are good. Nah, somebody wax potted the pickups and they ruined them. But that's okay. It's still an original Modern. You can replace the Tim Shaw's. Or maybe somebody actually wants to gig with it without them squealing. Poor Rick, I'll help you out here. I'd pay you 2400 Oh no! I've been outbid already! <laughs> well, I, I bumped up the price a little bit for him. That reminds me, I actually got to hold the prototype Modern that was made in the 80s. It was when I went to that collection up in Michigan and I bought quite a few guitars last year. He brought this thing out and he was just like, yeah, yeah, look at this thing. And it took a little bit for me to really come to appreciate exactly what it was. But it had the Gibson original prototype stamp on it and everything. He wasn't selling that guitar that day though, but who knows, maybe one day it will come up for sale. So it was a rather long episode, but we did bid on the burst. Hopefully you saw something you like and you bid on it if you want it. Just remember, 20% buyer's premium. You're gonna pay a lot more than you actually bid. Thank you for watching and take care.